Hi, my name is Colton Haney. I'm a senior MEP technical specialist at ATG USA. And in this video, I'd like to show you how to create a duct or piping system in Revit. While Revit does create systems automatically as you place components and connect them using ductwork or piping, it can still be extremely beneficial for you to create them manually. For example, you may find it useful to leverage these systems in your conceptual design process prior to laying out all of the ductwork or piping. Or maybe you plan to have multiple systems in your model and want to use the automatic layout tools that size the duct or pipe and connect the components for you. Whether or not it's beneficial for you to manually create the systems versus just allowing Revit to automatically create them could vary from project to project. And in some cases even vary from one phase of a project to another. If you are working on a small project or even a small system within a project, the automatic system creation may do everything that you need it to. But if you're working on a large and complex system or even multiple systems at a time, you may wish to leverage other tools available in Revit that require the system to be created before all of the components are connected. So with that in mind, let me walk you through the steps to manually create a duct or piping system in Revit. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a piping system but the workflow to create a duct system is exactly the same. The first thing you need to do is make sure that at least one of the components that is going to be a part of your system is placed in the model. You don't necessarily need all of the components placed in the model up front because you have the ability to add and remove components from the system at any time. Next, you need to select at least one of the components that is going to be part of the system. A couple of things to note here are that the elements that you select must all be the same system type and that you do not want to select the source equipment at this time. Once you've selected your components, you will see the modify tab appear in the ribbon. In this tab, in the create systems panel, click the appropriate button for the system you want to create. As you work with systems, you'll notice that some of the components can be a part of multiple types of systems, and there will be more than one option that you can choose from in this panel. Another way that you can start the system creation tool is by right-clicking on a connector and clicking Create System. After you've started the system creation tool, you'll need to set the system type by choosing one of the options in the dropdown as well as set a name for your new system. If you chose to start the tool by right-clicking on a connector and clicking Create System from that menu, you'll notice that the system type is actually preset for you. You can also choose whether or not to immediately open your new system in the system editor environment by checking or unchecking this box. Finally, click OK and your new system is created. If you didn't open the system editor when you created the system, or if you want to make modifications to your system later, you can open the editor by selecting one of the components in the system. And in the systems tab that appears, you can click edit system. In this environment, you have the ability to add and remove components from the system, as well as designate the source equipment that feeds the other elements in the system. And then to leave the environment and maintain any changes that you've made, be sure to click Finish Editing System. Also, just a quick tip, you may find it helpful to have the system browser open while creating systems to help keep track of which elements have been assigned to a system and which have not. To open up the system browser, you just go to the View tab in the ribbon, find the User Interface box, and in the drop down, turn on system browser. Here you will see a list of everything, all the systems in the project that will show you the unconnected components in the project, as well as show you what systems, have, what components are already connected to them. And that's all there is to it. It really is that simple and easy to manually create a duct or piping system in Revit. And with the system or systems created ahead of time, before you do all of your layout and design work, 
you can now leverage them to help with your preliminary design and even make use of some of the other helpful features within Revit, such as the automatic layout tools. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you for joining and be sure to subscribe for more technical videos.